Good evening, Anthony Murphy from mythicalireland.com. I've long had a, a, a very good use for Google Earth in my own work and I found it very useful for looking at sites and uh, you know how they're positioned in the landscape and especially in relation to alignments etc etc so I thought why not give you a brief tour of the monuments in my sort of local area which is the Boyne Valley uh, I happen to live close to probably the most famous prehistoric monuments in Ireland the monuments of Bruna Bonia, Newgrange, Nouth and Douth but uh, I said, no, why, why not uh, give people an idea of, um, you know, exactly where they're located? You can do this yourself, especially if you don't live in Ireland or if you live in a part of Ireland where it's not convenient to get to the East Coast uh, too often. Um, so the Boyne Estuary is located north of Dublin um, here on the East Coast. So this is Drogheda, which is my hometown. This is where I live. And, oh, sorry about that. Drogheda. Um, has uh, sat on both sides of the Boyne for a long time now and uh, the curious thing about Drogheda is that for a long time you know there were two towns there was one on the north side and one on the south side and there was a charter granted to Drogheda in the 12th century um, 1194 and we celebrated the 800th anniversary of that in 1994 with a, a big year of celebrations and that was seen as a sort of a unifying moment however i mean up until recent times Drogheda marked the bore or sorry the boyne marked the border between county loud to the north and county meath to the south what has happened lately in recent years is that the the, the border of county loud has been extended to, to 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 take in a lot of the south side of Drogheda but in addition to that, uh, it also marked the border between two dioceses of the church, uh, the diocese of the, the diocese of Armagh to the north of the river, and the diocese of Meath to the south. So, and still to this day in Drogheda, there's this thing about you know you live on the far side. It doesn't matter which side you're from. If you're talking to somebody who's from the opposite side of the river, you call them a far sider. It's very, it's very interesting. It's quite a quirky thing. It's quite funny actually. Just to show you, one of the monuments of note in Drogheda is the Mill Mount. Now, Mill Mount is this uh, sort of martello tower built by the British in the early 19th century, in the first decade of the 1800s, uh, when they were fortifying uh, Drogheda as a garrison town. And um, the, uh, the tower was built on top of a, a mount, which is said locally to have been uh, to have been put there the mound by the Normans but which a lot of people in the area believe might be much older than that so if you put yourself down to street level you get a good look at Mill Mount so this is the mound this is the Martello Tower it was shelled during the War of Independence and it was reconstructed in the late 1990s and um there's a museum at in the Millmount complex, and uh, the Martello Tower inside is very nice now. Um, ooh, I moved there, and the, uh, the Google photography changed from one time to another because you can see the flower bed disappears and reappears. Yeah, 2009 and 2011. It's interesting the way the imagery changes. Anyway, so that's Millmount. Uh, sorry, I have to exit Street View. Melmount is considered locally to be the burial place of Amergin, who led sort of the spiritual figurehead of the Milesian invasion of Ireland, which is recounted in the Leber Gabola or the Lower Gawala, as it would be known in modern Irish. And um, of course, this uh, work, which is probably largely a, a fictional work details many invasions but the Milesians came to take Ireland from the Tuatha de Danann and they landed at the Boyne Estuary and Amrigan was said to have set foot uh, at a place called Col Cope here's C Cope village on the southern shore of the Boyne and if we can zoom in I'm just hoping we can see it you just can see it there at Cope is a ring fort uh, now I'm not sure that might be a barrow 
but it's said locally to be the burial place of Culpa, who was one of Amrigan's brothers who died when the Tuatha Dan and raised a tempest. And um, the agreement had been reached that the Milesians would set back out to sea and that if they could land again, then they, they could take Ireland from the Tuatha Dan. But when they went back out, the Tuatha Dan and raised a storm to try and stop them from coming back again. And I was just to give you a bit of context. So that's the Drogheda area. Drogheda is growing in size uh, and has done quite a lot in the last couple of decades. This is the M1 motorway, which connects uh, Belfast in the north with Dublin in the south. Uh, skirts around the western flank of the town, and is carried over the uh, over the river by the very famous Boyne Cable Bridge, or as it's known now, the Boyne Valley Mary McAleese Bridge. But anyway, to put all this in context, that's Drogheda, and that's the estuary of the Boyne. And this is where the Boyne, sorry, this is where the Boyne loops around the great monuments of Brunabonia. So as you can see, not very far from Drogheda at all, only a few miles distant. Uh, it's, there's Newgrange there. It's, I'll tell you exactly now, well, this is one of the very, very useful things about uh, Google Earth. We can draw a line from Newgrange, let's say to Mill Mount, and let's see how far apart they are. 5.3 miles, or if you want that in kilometres, 8.53 kilometres. So, just over 5 miles from Mill Mount to Newgrange. So, a very short distance. So, this is the Brunabonia complex. Uh, you can see Newgrange here. I'll zoom in on it. With its uh, white quartz front, you see some of the tourists milling around there. So access to Newgrange is from the visitor centre only, so you can't drive up to Newgrange and get access. You have to go via the visitor centre, so I'm going to show you where that is. It's actually across the river. It's kind of very well hidden, not far from the village of Donore on the southern side of the river. So if you're ever going to Newgrange, Remember that if you're coming from Dublin, you have to take exit 9 off the M1 motorway and head out to Donore and go through Donore and down along the river to the interpretive centre. That uh, if you go north of the river, while you can drive to this road, this public road, and have a look into Newgrange over the hedge, which is where most of my pictures of Newgrange are taken from, in front of this hedge. You can't get access into the monument from that side of the river. You have to go to the visitor centre. So here's the visitor centre, nicely tucked away uh, on the just on the southern uh, flank of the Boyne River. Car park and bus park and the walkway down through the trees. The centre itself is very nicely disguised, almost like, well, I suppose that's the way it's designed to look like mounds uh, hidden in the landscape. You walk across this footbridge and uh, well this footbridge across the river and down under here along this footbridge along this footbridge to this little bus park here and these are the little buses that bring you to Newgrange and to Nouth. Nouth is the same the only access to Nouth is via the visitor centre so I'll show you Nouth here's Nouth here with all of its uh, reconstructed satellite mounts a total of 17 of those found during the 40 years of excavation of the site by Professor George Ogan and his uh, team. George is still going strong, still alive and well, a hale and hearty as they say, and working on further publications relating to his uh, many years of work at Nouth. So that's Nouth overlooking uh, a fairly sort of spectacular uh, turn in the Boyne River. We'll talk about maybe the Boyne in a little bit. I want to show you a few other bits and pieces. Then we have to turn our attention to Douth, which is the only one of the three monuments which hasn't been excavated in modern times. But it was, there was a botched excavation on Douth in the 1840s at the time of the famine. You can see from the imagery that there's a fairly substantial crater in the top of the mount. That's almost certainly a person there in that image. Um, so, R.H. Firth 
and a group of antiquarians came here in the 1840s when the Great Famine was uh, happening, unfortunately. Uh, they had to raise money to, to undertake this excavation in which they were... It was an ill-fated excavation. They were looking for treasure, but they never found any anything of significance. Uh, a few bones, bone fragments and a few pins and a few pendants and, you know, decorated balls and stuff like that. Nothing of any sort of major significance. It was a disappointment for them. Further to the east is the great uh, Douth Henge, ingloriously named Site Q by the uh, archaeologists. Uh, Douth Henge has two openings, one in the southwest and one in the northeast, which align on the summer solstice sunrise, which has been witnessed by Richard Moore and I uh, a number of years ago. There are plenty of other sites that you can see in, in the images. Um, some of them obviously will leap out at you fairly quickly. A very large henge site here down near the Boyne. Uh, more visible in some image in some aerial imagery than others because a lot of these sites now are very sort of uh, subtle so mound b along the flood plain of the Boyne is there mound a which is fenced off is there and you might see traces of the henge around it which is quite denuded at this stage uh, to the east of newgrange a largely destroyed site called site u and if we can have a look here at site E, just in over the hedge. So lots of smaller mounds in and around the area. At Newgrange itself, there is, you know, this partly excavated, very large, um, uh, I just suppose you'd call it a sort of a ceremonial enclosure of some kind. A lot of post holes uh, found. Uh, obviously some of it continues into this field, which hasn't been excavated. Just about visible in this image is the U-shaped Cursus Monument beside Newgrange. This U-shaped feature in the field. I just wonder is there something else that I can show you here. Uh, this is a modern feature, so don't get excited. Yes, Site M, uh, uh, Ring Fort and um, uh, other features in the field there. That was excavated about a decade ago by Geraldine and Matthew Stout. So that's the bend of the Boyne. Um, the river was forded beneath Rossnery. Here's Rossnery. Uh, the river f was forded in this area. Yeah, down near there's a house here along the river. The f fording point is in this area. And somewhere along here in folklore, this is, I think, Feox Pool, which is where the Salmon of Knowledge was caught. And that's a very famous story, uh, Fionn McCool. Um, was with Finnegus the Wise, the Druid, and uh, Finnegus was cooking, or he, uh, F I think Fionn was helping Finnegus cook the salmon, and he burnt his thumb on it and put his thumb in his mouth and gained all the knowledge, all the wisdom of the salmon. So the Boyne turns then and heads westwards beneath Cruban towards Slane, and of interest, uh, well, of one of the many places of interest in Slane is the Hill of Slane, because the Hill of Slane is. Um, very well known as the site where St. Patrick lit the Paschal Fire and introduced Christianity to Ireland. But uh, it's a fascinating place. There are ruins up here, Christian ruins, but there's also prehistoric ruins. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you walk up the hill, of course, you're greeted. You're greeted by the cemetery and the old ruins of the old uh, college building and the... Uh, the bell tower and the old church in the graveyard there's some 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 very old stones which are said to be the headstones of saint urk who was the first bishop uh, of slain uh, consecrated by saint patrick but behind all those in on the very peak of the hill uh, and uh, enclosed within these trees is a mound said locally to be locally to be called doma slanya uh, the burial mound of Slanya, who was uh, said to have been a king of the Fir Bullock uh, in mythology. And there are archaeological investigations ongoing into the uh, age and structure of that mound, which might tell us more about it. There are other features on the hill as well, which aren't immediately visible in the Google imagery, but which uh, the likes of LiDAR imagery have helped uh, to really show up and display very, very nicely. So effectively, that's the immediate Boyne Valley area 
from the estuary through Drogheda, uh, uh, the bend of the Boyne area, which has uh, 50 or 60 monuments in, in, in it, uh, down as far as Slane. Uh, the Mattock River here, uh, which uh, branches off the uh, the Boyne River, has a couple of sites uh, not too far away from it. I'm just looking for uh, this is the ritual pond, one of several ritual ponds in the Boyne in the immediate Boyne area. Um, there's a pair of them here in front of Newgrange. But I'm looking for site uh, S. I think is the again. I'm sorry, the ingloriously named site S. Yes, there it is. This mound here. That's Mount S. There's a little mound in a field off the Drogheda to Slane Road called Site T, which was excavated. I think that was excavated by George Ogan, uh, maybe with the assistance of Professor Frank Mitchell, prior to the excavations at Nouth. And um, it has a very short, uh, sort of wide chamber slash passageway that points to the northeast, which is said to have a summer solstice a sunrise alignment. And just before we go, we might as well go down as far as Tara to show you, uh, roughly speaking, the uh, location of Tara. So the Boyne passes Slane and then heads southwest towards Navan, and then turns again dramatically almost southeast in the direction of Tara. And um, on the hill of Tara, there are many, many monuments of uh, note and different ages. Um, Dumanang Eel, the Mound of the Hostages, is the oldest uh, presently existing monument as in still standing uh, probably dates to the late Neolithic uh, perhaps the early Bronze Age but uh, certainly four and a half thousand to five thousand years old um, the partially destroyed Wrath of the Synods or the British Israelites dug in the late 1800s looking for the Ark of the Covenant no less which they believe is buried up there which I think that's a very, very dubious claim, to be honest. Anyway, we won't go into that today. And, of course, Chuck Cormac and on Fora, um, the King's Seat, the Sloping Trenches, and this, uh, sorry, linear monument, uh, Chuck Mihorta, the Banqueting Hall, which is probably a Cursus-type monument, which is aligned pretty much north-south. Here on the eastern flank of the hill, you can see, if we zoom in, there is a, a restored well, the well of the white cow, and uh, beautifully restored. Nice place to go and uh, just sit and contemplate. And uh, again, uh, Tara is a beautiful place to be at the best of times. Uh, there's always um, a lot of people up there, even in the middle of winter, and even when the weather's not great, it's just one of those things that resonates with people. Something I thought I'd mention just before I go is the fact that the Boyne River rises near Carberry in County Kildare. Here's the village of Carberry. And up on the hill of Carberry, there's a number of monuments. You can see them here, prehistoric and historic monuments. And there's a mound here, a flat topped mound, which might be a moat. And you see other features here. I'm sure the archeologists know all about these and what they are and are able to give, you can see some of the uh, uh, sort of uh, rectangular uh, shapes there. Uh, in the grounds of Newbury House uh, in Carberry, uh, close to this road here in this area, is the Trinity Well, which is said to be said to be Necton's Well, which is the mythical rising place of the Boyne. And uh, fascinatingly, if you draw a line from there, it's the source of the Boyne, down to Millmount, which overlooks the estuary in Drogheda. Uh, it passes through Rath Maeve, which is this very large uh, henge uh, structure uh, immediately to the south of Tara. I'm just making sure I'm in the... I'm not. I knew I was in the wrong area. There it is there. Uh, Rathmave. So it may be that um, in the ancient mindset there was a significance to Tara being located on a direct line from the source of the Boyne 
uh, down to where it meets the sea at Drogheda, anciently known as Drogheda Oha, but um, in in prehistory most likely known as Inver Culpa, the meeting of the waters of Culpa, which is said to be named from the Milesian brother, as I said, Culp, Culpa, but which is also in an, in an older myth said to be named from the thigh bone of a huge monster that was killed at Brunebogne and tossed into the Boyne River. And if you're interested, there is another video on my channel about that. And it's the story of the slaying of the Mata, M-A-T-A, and how that might constitute uh, one of Ireland's original, or if not the original, um, creation myth of Ireland. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget you can see more on my channel Mythical Ireland on YouTube and also on my website www.mythicalireland.com